Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be evaluating an infinite radical expression. We have under the radical 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared plus so on and so forth. x is between negative 1 and 1. Now notice here that the power of x is 1 less than the coefficient that multiplies it. All right, great. So I'm going to be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. Our first method is kind of interesting, and we use this back and forth uh, for infinite uh, series or sums like this. So suppose we have the following sum, 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared. You know, uh, let's go ahead and call this something. How about calling this s? S for sum. Now, I want to turn this into something that I can handle. Uh, and if you remember, uh, we have the famous uh, 1 plus x plus x squared dot 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 right this is our geometric series the infinite version and if I do the following I'm gonna be getting something like that so I'm going to integrate both sides the integral of s dx is going to be the integral of 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared I'm gonna integrate term by term dx now when you integrate this you're gonna get integral of s dx now, if you integrate 1, you're going to get x. If you integrate 2x, you know, the rule for x to the power n, as long as n does not equal negative 1, the rule says x to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1, and then there's a constant plus c at the end, right? So we're going to increase the power by 1, so x becomes x squared and divide by 2, but the 2 in front of it is going to make it x squared. Or you can think of it this way. Uh, 2x is the derivative of which function and the answer is going to be x squared. 3x squared is the derivative of x cubed, so on and so forth. Now, you might be questioning like, why don't we have a constant here? This is kind of like infinite, so if you want, you can add a plus c at the end. But since I'm going to be using differentiation, it's not going to matter. All right, great. So, now we do know what this sum uh, is because we can go ahead and take out an x and then it becomes a well-known sum and this sum as long as x is between negative 1 and 1 it is going to be equivalent to 1 over 1 minus x so from here the integral of s dx is just going to be x over 1 minus x because this part is 1 over 1 minus x alrighty so now uh, again if you want to add a constant to it that's fine but I don't think we need to do that so now this is the integral. I want to find the sum, not just the sum, but I want to find the square root of this sum. So I'm trying to evaluate square root of s. So let's go ahead and differentiate both sides because that's going to get rid of the integral sign and give us s. So when you differentiate both sides, you're going to get s equals. Now, how do you differentiate x divided by 1 minus x? Uh, the quotient rule applies. When you uh, d differentiate the first one, the top derivative of x, 1, multiply by the bottom, minus the derivative of the bottom. Now, the derivative of 1 minus x is the, the same as the derivative of negative x because the derivative of a constant is 0. So it's just going to be negative 1. And then multiply by the top function, which is x. Okay, great. And then the bottom one is just going to be squared. And you know, this is just going to bug me, so let me separate them. All right, here we go. Now, if you simplify the numerator, you're going to get 1 minus x plus x from here divided by 1 minus x quantity squared. You're going to cancel out the x's and end up with something real simple. Maybe some of you already knew that. S can be written as 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared. But remember, our goal is to find the square root of s, right? That's what we're trying to evaluate. So let's go ahead and square root both sides. And when we do square root both sides, we have to be careful because we have to use the absolute value. So how do you use the absolute value with this? Well, remember uh, our uh, given conditions, we said that x must be between negative 1 and 1. So we know that x is less than 1. Therefore, 1 minus x is going to be a positive quantity. And the absolute value symbol or sign is not going to change anything. So square root of s is going to be 1 over 1 minus x. 
Great. So that's basically going to be the answer, right? Because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for square root of s and that is equal to 1 over 1 minus x. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method now. Now, our second method is a little different. To be able to find the square root of this sum, I'm, go I'm going to try to obtain that sum first from my uh, known, well-known geometric series. So, we already talked about this. 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus so on and so forth. This is equal to 1 over 1 minus x. It's convergent if x is between negative 1 and 1. I keep saying this because some people say that I don't talk about the domain, but I did and I do. So now this is the sum. But remember, our sum looks like this, right? Under the radical. So we have 1, one plus 2x and then we have 3x squared and then 4x cubed. So the higher powers, uh, the higher the powers, the more we need them. So you do need x twice, but you do need the x squared three times. So this kind of gives us an idea. We can obtain this sum by shifting our series in a smart way like this. So what happens if I add to this x plus x squared plus x cubed and then so on and so forth. And then I'm going to be getting, if you add in columns, you're going to get 1 plus 2x. Great. So we got the first two terms, but we, we're not getting 3x squared. We're only getting x squared, uh, 2x squared. But we do want to get more x squared, so we're going to keep adding it. But let's go ahead and evaluate this first. This is nothing but x times the first thing, so it can be written as x over 1 minus x. Obviously, you could also write this as 1 over 1 minus x minus 1, because uh, that's what's missing. And if you make a common denominator, you're going to get 1 minus 1 plus x divided by 1 minus x. And at the end, you're going to get the same thing. So it doesn't really matter how you approach it. It's going to turn out uh, to be the same thing. Now, the next thing I'm going to add starts with x squared because, remember, I need 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared. So let's go ahead and start with x squared and continue. This is going to be x squared divided by 1 minus x. And obviously, this is just going to continue, but I already have enough x squared, so the next one is going to be x cubed. It's just going to continue like this, so on and so forth. And now, at the end, these are all going to be added. Let's see what that sum looks like. So the first one, now... I'm not going to add the left-hand side because it's going to give me what I need. I'm interested in the right-hand side. So, in other words, what I need, 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared plus 4x cubed, so on and so forth, is going to equal, is going to equal 1 over 1 minus x plus x over 1 minus x plus x squared over 1 minus x plus so on and so forth. So hopefully this gave you an idea about what the sum is going to look like because I do have a common denominator, so I don't have to worry about it. I can just add these uh, fractions, and it looks like this. 1 plus x plus x squared plus so on and so forth, divided by 1 minus x, which is the common denominator. But if you look at the numerator, you'll notice that it is nothing but 1 over 1 minus x. So now our expression becomes, you don't have to write all the terms, by the way. It becomes 1 over 1 minus x over 1 minus x, because this is where that is equal to, right? And now, since you're dividing by 1 minus x twice, that means 1 minus x quantity squared. So we can write it as a perfect square in the denominator, and it looks like the following. And it pretty much brings us to the same point. Now, we are trying to square root both sides. Let's go ahead and do that. And if you square root both sides, you're going to get the square root of a perfect square, and as you know, x is less than 1, so that quantity is going to be positive from absolute value, so on and so forth. And now our expression, the stuff that we're looking for, is going to be 1 over 1 minus x. All right? And this brings us to the end of this video. I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.